Hi, I am Miguel Maldonado and I am here to present the project I worked on during the pandemic. In this case, it is a 3D printed axial flux brushless DC motor. This is not the first 3D printed electric motor I have done, but it is the first axial flux one. The initial aim of this project was to measure how good the performance and efficiency of an axial flux motor made entirely out of plastic can be. It was a very interesting project which I enjoy a lot and wanted to share it because I think it can be interesting for others who enjoy doing these kind of projects. I have compiled most of the photos that I took during the process in this presentation and my idea is to summarize the most important and interesting points, including videos of the performance and the results of the efficiency measurements. Finally, I would like to say that although I am an electrical engineer, I am not a specialist in electrical machine design and therefore I am aware that there are aspects of the design that could be improved. Firstly, I carried out the 3D design of the motor. The software I used was FreeCAD. It's a fairly simple and stackable design that allows to increase the number of magnet and coil disks to any desirable value. In this case, the design consists of two coil disks for the stator and three magnet disks for the rotor. All parts were 3 printed using PTG plastic, 100% infill. The main issue with this material is that it has certain elasticity, therefore in order to withstand uncompensated magnetic forces on the end disks, I had to design them with stiffeners. Talking a bit more in detail about the 3 design, when running without a propeller, the coils are cooled with force air pushed by the stiffeners, following more or less the path shown in the picture. Axial flux motors allow to concentrate the magnetic field much better in the area of the coils, which is why I consider this type of machine, taking into account that I wanted to make an ironless motor. Due to mounting tolerances, the motor was designed with a 3mm gap between discs. I could actually have squished it a bit more to get higher magnetic field values inside the motor, but I wanted to avoid surprises during assembly, considering the amount of work and time it was going to take me to do it. While designing the motor, the magnetic field distribution was taken into account by means of a FEM study. Given that the software use only allowed to the analysis, the simulation does not faithfully represent the real magnetic field paths, but it allowed me to have an approximate view of it inside the machine and to compare how it varied depending on the grade of magnet used, its distribution and the air gap distances. Some of the magnetic field simulations are shown here. As I left considerable air gaps and being air core coils, the concentration of magnetic field lines in the area of the coils is not excessively high. Additionally, certain magnetic field recirculation is observed between adjacent magnets, but in spite of this, there is a fairly decent magnetic field guiding that allows values of around 0.3 teslas to be achieved. Focusing on the rotor, it consists of three discs, each composed of a large and a small M42 neodymium magnets. The magnets are arranged with alternating polarity. To improve the dynamic behavior and reduce vibrations, I did a passive balancing by weighing each of the magnets and distributing them as evenly as possible. As for the coils, they consist of five 0.4 mm NM copper wires in parallel, allowing an aminal current of about 10 amps with the reduced ventilation. Each coil has 14 turns and making them was by far the most tedious and time consuming process, but they turn out quite decent. Regarding the stator, it consists of two identical discs composed of nine coils. Each disc is made up of three segments and each segment carries one phase. It is a three phase winding arranged in AAA BBB CCC configuration. The coils are glued using epoxy to the plastic structure in order to withstand the electrodynamic forces during operation. As the coils are air core coils, the motor has no cogging torque, which reduces vibrations. The design allows the terminals of the three phases to be accessible so that the type of connection can be changed to study how this affects the performance and efficiency of the machine. Here, on the left side, all the pieces prepared for the motor assembly are shown. Additionally, I have included the time lapse of the assembly.
To conclude with the 3D design, the assembled motor is on. The screws used for the assembly are made of stainless steel in order to reduce the magnetic field leaks and to achieve as high concentration as possible where the coils are located. The motor measures approximately 11 cm in diameter and 6 cm in length. Here it is shown the EMF induced in the phases while using the machine as a generator. As my oscilloscope only has two channels, the induced EMF of two phases are displayed and then subtracting one from the other with the math function is possible to get the line voltage in pink. The EMF induced on the phases is 120 degrees shifted, which is what was expected from this motor design. In regards to the control, the common six-step sequence for sensorless brushless DC motor controllers is used, in which the rotor position is known by taking into account the zero crossing of the induced voltage in the non-energized phase of each step. A tuning of the speed controller parameters was required to achieve a smooth motor operation. Depending on the type of connection used, D or Y, the energized coils in each step change. Here it is shown which phases are energized in each step of the sequence for a Y connection. The color blue and red only represents the polarity of the coils, north or south, taking into account the direction of the winding and the direction of the current. The same analysis is shown here for delta connection. In this case, all coils are energized at each step of the sequence. One of the most important things was to verify that the motor design behaved well from the torque point of view in each step of the control sequence for the combination of magnets and coils selected, in this case 8 magnets and 9 coils. For this, an extract of the complete control sequence is presented here. In red and blue, the energized coils are shown and in magenta and cyan the magnets are superimposed. The arrows represent the force experienced by the magnets as a result of interaction between the magnetic fields of the coils and the magnets. It can be seen that in all cases the overall torque has the same direction. It is interesting to see that at the beginning of each sequence not all vectors point in the same direction, having a couple of them cancelling each other out even though there is a positive neck torque. This is one of the reasons why the torque fluctuates slightly during operation. In order to get the most out of the motor and to be able to bring it to its maximum performance, a significant low torque was needed. In this case, I printed a 3 white blade propeller. I took the 3D design from the internet and adapted it to fit the shaft. It was printed in PLA, which has worse mechanical properties than PTG. The torque that the propeller had to withstand at 7000 RPM was too much and the consequences was quite cat catastrophic. I believe it is important to add these images to show that great care must be taken when operating 3D printed electric motors at high RPM. In this case, I was fully aware of the danger, so I was wearing safety goggles and I had prepared a cardboard barrier to stop flying pieces. After the incident, I ordered a new propeller from a local 3D printed company. In this case, the propeller was 28% larger than the previous one and was made of nylon, which significantly improved its mechanical properties. For safety reasons, although I was aware that the rotor could withstand more than 8000 RPM from previous experience in other motor projects, I decided to set the operational point at maximum voltage at around 5000 RPM. This is why I made the propeller a little bigger, trying to increase the low torque. Here is the propeller mounted on the shaft. With the new propeller, I achieved the goal of reaching its maximum performance operational point close to 5000 RPM. As a curiosity, at this RPM, the large magnets experience 8 kg of centrifugal force, which is fine for the structural integrity of the rotor. Well, finally, here is a video showing the performance of the motor. The motor is quite noisy as it gets closer to the maximum RPM due to the high amount of air it pushes, 
which forced me to hold it to the table with a pair of clamps. Here is the setup used to perform the efficiency measurement. In order to measure the mechanical torque on the shaft, I designed and printed the blue pieces. This is a very simple and effective way to measure the torque during motor operation because the torque experienced by the rotor is also experienced by the stator in opposite direction. The rotational speed was measured with a tachometer and for the electrical power measurement I use a DC clamp and a multimeter. The electrical power measurement includes the losses on the speed controller as the current is measured at the input of the controller. Here are the measurements results for both Y and D connections. It can be seen that for similar operating points, the Y connection has significantly better efficiency. As mentioned before, the losses of the speed controller are included in the measurement, so the motor has indeed slightly higher efficiency than shown. The motor achieves an efficiency of around 55%, which is not bad considering that this is a machine without iron and with considerable air gaps. Recently, during the compilation of the images for this presentation, and almost one year after the completion of the original project, I became curious about how much the efficiency could be improved without significant effort. That is why I decided to design new external magnet disks to include a magnetic yoke by means of a steel disk and change the small magnets from M42 to M55 grade. This is a very simple way to increase the magnetic field density inside the machine while keeping the air core coils concept. The solution showed an increase from 0.36 Tesla to 0.47 Tesla in the area of the coils, which is 23% higher. Here is the rotor with the disc assembled. At each end I installed three discs, each 0.7 mm thick, made of carbon steel. The increasing weight and moment of inertia of the rotor was quite significant and affected the dynamic response of the machine in terms of acceleration capability, although it gained in performance and efficiency as will be shown later. Here is a video of the performance of the motor with the simple upgrades installed.
again, I perform the efficiency measurement with the same setup used before, which is the one shown here. Finally, the results of the efficiency measurement with the upgrades are shown. An improvement of more than 10% is reached, getting a value close to 65%. By increasing the magnetic field density inside the machine, higher back EMF is induced in the phases, and therefore, lower current is needed to reach the same torque for a third operational point that without the upgrades. This clearly evidences the need to include ferromagnetic materials in electrical machines. This is the end of the video and I really hope you enjoyed this short project presentation as much as I did. Thank you.